don't know whether you guys caught this uh, when we first came in. I don't know whether the, whether the footage was running. When I mentioned that the building was being renovated when I first came here, mm -hmm. so we were in a dorm, <laughs> and all the professors taught in these really small dorm rooms and cubicles. So uh, when I first came here. Uh, since I had gone to school here previously, I didn't have the benefit immediately of being able to co reconnect with the space that I've been in. So the most comfortable way, I think, to get used to any kind of space is to get used to it musically. And when I realized that we were going to, uh, that the, I was the part of what my job would be to not only have the combo program, but to come up with a, an idea for a direction. My immediate thought was. The combo program is the one part in a music program where students who are interested in going out and playing gigs, working in the musical landscape, this is a, a way that they can be trained. So I felt that there should be combos of different types. So we, we set up some more traditional jazz combos and, and, and this one freshman guy with a big head full of red hair because I said, hey man, I, I play blues guitar and I can't read a note but I can play and I really want to put together a blues group. And they were cool, let's find some people who want to do it. So they subsequently did. And um, there was some internal problems of that group staying together or whatever. And uh, I said, all right, well, uh, one guy wanted to quit and we had to find some personnel to kind of merge some folks. And I said, well, you know what, you guys aren't going to quit because you asked to do this group. You know, you wanted to do a blues group, so we're going to keep this intact. And we'll find some people who want to be involved. So over a, a short period of time, those people were found and then some people <clears throat> around who had a common spirit and played different instruments like Dave in here, who sang and played harmonica, who had auditioned for the vocal jazz ensemble. Uh, I said, I think it would be good for you to meet these guys. And so that immediately became kind of, that group, Mr. Chesterfield, became the cornerstone of the combo program because they experienced adversity before they played a gig. And that core unit of musicians experienced, you know, someone leaving, someone coming in. The music became central and became more important than the, than the personalities or the individuals that were there. So the people that remained, remained because they wanted to do that music. Um, that was the first group to do any kind of recording out of the combo program. And when personnel-wise, people graduating, whatever, when the group had, had run a significant course, some of the individuals that were there became involved in, in the Sax Brothers, which was an extension of a concept that's, that more or less started there, but musically could move into another path that that particular group did not necessarily want to do as a group. So some individuals that were involved wanted to expand, and it has always been about growth. Uh, we were able to during the same period of time started a music marketing class where some people came into that mix who started to interact with the combos and we had a very successful uh, battle of, no, well it really wasn't even a battle of the yeah, bands but no a, a stock, showcase. Negative one. <laughs> no stock negative one. <laughs> but it was a, a, a showcase of local bands here. Uh, Almost and, weekend, yeah. Yeah, and, the, and the whole thing was put together and organized really by the students and held at the attic. One of the, um, one of the more disappointing things for me, as a, a person involved with the university, was seeing the riots. Uh, but it was I had been here for an interview, and the riots happened just before I got here. So I was in Houston looking at the news. And my wife and I were sitting there, and we had just come back from my interviews and decided we would take jobs here. And they said, uh, riot at a college campus in Washington State. So we both looked at each other and said, well, we know that's in Seattle. There's no way that's in Pullman, right? That's when the news comes on, and it's in Pullman. <laughs> So, uh, I kind of came here with an idea that, that uh, okay, you know, this is a school I went to. People have a negative attitude about some aspects of it, so music is something that can change that. So, we did something down at the attic that was really positive, and I was really bummed out when there was an incident a couple of years, maybe I guess the very next year after our event. That year, it was so, all the work that had gone into developing that as a potential venue for our groups was erased by a single incident that was blown way out of proportion that got that was completely mishandled that is completely out of control and so that became one less place for people here that have been working on the music scene to play 
there's, there's always work like that to do. Uh, every couple of steps forward that can get taken can be taken back by a step that's out of the realm of us as musicians. We have to continue to continue to move forward. And I look at a group, for instance, and there have been some, some good combos here, but the survivors, the people that have really put in uh, some very hard work have been the individuals that started with Mr. Chesterville, the individuals that became the Stax Brothers through, what, three configurations of Stax Brothers? Musicians that were not only interested in, okay, let's play the game for some money, or let's go play some house party and make some beer money, or let's do this, but to document the work, write original material, record, try to glean as much from this scene as possible, instead of looking at something and saying, well, we can't do that because we don't have this. It's like, well, okay, well, let's do, let's do our music and let's do this with what we have. We recorded complete CDs in the studio up upstairs before there was any gear there. The fact that the room was there and it was an ambient environment means, okay, well, let's take in a DAT player or let's take in a, a mini disc right. recorder <laughs> or, you know, or let's and go in and record and then pull all the... Uh, all the blackboards out of the classrooms and set up partitions so that we had separation and you know <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean we're talking about some really hardcore dudes that were paid uh, there was a recording session in the foyer because the uh, foyer of the music building has a nice ambiance and natural reverb so we recorded a rock group down there circus mm -hmm. was recorded in that area with the same type of process using a mini disc recorder and uh, some some pretty like middle 20th century techniques <laughs> <laughs> went into making yeah. those recordings but uh, what resulted from it was what I feel was a very close-knit and very tight uh, level of camaraderie between between the musicians. Uh, the magicians were part of that mix as well uh, and many of these groups have actually been able to hold together after graduation I think because of the freedom that they were allowed to experience their music here, free from uh, scrutiny or judgment. Because I was a faculty advisor, but I was not an overseer, man. You know, I didn't go in and censor what anybody was doing. If I thought something was unprofessional, I'd speak about that. But I didn't try to project my musical views on, on the groups. If I was asked to lend an ear and say, what do you think about this? Or what can we do here? We you know, that's something about this progression we, we aren't hearing. Or can you give us some idea about what you hear in this case? Does this need horns? Or do we need background vocals here? Yeah, that's where my, I feel that's my job. But, but not to dictate or make any of the groups a mirror image of what I think should have been here. And I, <clears throat> I think that's one of the reasons that the program has lasted and has been successful so that some of the younger groups that are here now have been able to benefit from it. But what does concern me now is um, fragmentation and segmenting off where there's, there's less of the team spirit kind of mentality. That is a, a little bit disappointing, quite frankly.